Shalom Church, praise the Lord. Welcome back to our channel, Tro Chosen Treasure. My name is Benjamin Daniel, and I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this day. I hope everybody's having a blessed day ahead and keeping in good health. And I pray and hope that the Lord has been watching over you and leading and guiding you. Well, today I have a, a review. It's not a book review, but you're going to be noticing over here. It's like a comic review. <laughs> All right, I, I know I do not read comics that are meant for uh, little kids and little children, but these are comics in the sense that they are tracts and comics made for adults and teens, young adults and teens. So this is from a very controversial group. I'm sure many of you have heard of this organization still in circulation, still in print today. And from a personal point of view, these comics have impacted my life in a major way. Uh, that's how I was introduced to the gospel of salvation through these comics over here. And it's from JTC, Jack T. Chick. It's an organization that's based in California. Jack Chick passed away many years ago to be with the Lord, and it's still run by a group of other people over there, and they still come out with lots of comics and tracts. This is how some of the comics look, and they also have some booklets dealing with different issues that are in the church. False religion, abortion, uh, the entire LGBT and sodomy issue, and it also deals with Roman Catholicism. It deals with false uh, gospels out there with uh, Mormonism and Jehovah's Witnesses. So there's so many different areas that they tackle and they come out with it in a graphical visual format today. So these are the comics and they also have Jack T. Chick tracks like these. They are plenty out there and I'll be doing a separate review on the tracks that I have from JTC and I have quite a lot but they also have a lot more that are still in circulation, still in print and I don't have many of them still. So what I have is just half or what they currently have in their catalog. So these are the comics over here, and I'll go through real quick. I don't want to go in-depth in it. So if you've seen them, I uh, hope and pray that the Lord has been using them in your life, and I hope it's been an inspiration to you. These are called the Crusader comics. All right, a lot of people will probably not like that logo. They even the term Crusaders in that medieval font over there. Now, we all know the history of the Crusaders um, against the... Um, Arab influence and the invasion in Jerusalem that took place during the medieval ages. There was the First Crusade, Second Crusade, Third and Fourth Crusade. You got to keep in mind, none of these crusaders were actual born-again Christian believers. They were commissioned by the Roman Catholic Church, by the Vatican, to go there and repossess the land of Jerusalem and Israel and claim it for the Vatican. So I'm not going to get into details of that you can do a historical research and search on it but uh, maybe this would be a little controversial why Jack Chick used this uh, some of people that I have searched online and even spoken to and even sent a couple of messages was Jack Chick uh, an anti-semitic that's why I probably use it because the crusade time was not just a time of um, violence and extreme deception but it was a time where Jewish people faced a lot of slaughter and a lot of hardship at the hands of these crusaders. So whenever you use the term crusade or crusaders in front of a Jew, uh, they get very angry about it. They get very upset because it was not a very pleasant time for them. So no, Jack Chick was not an anti-Semitic from what I've gathered. And there must have been some reason why he used this particular term and this symbology. Fine. So. There's so many comics, I'm not going to go through chronologically the number of volumes, I just picked them up at random. And this one is called Alberto Part 1. And I'll just show you the back of what they have currently. I think there's a lot more you can go over to chick.com to search out. So this was the first one they came out with, it was called the Crusaders Operation Bucharest. Then they came up with Broken Cross, Scarface, Exorcists, yeah, Chaos, Sabotage, the Ark, The Gift, Angel of Light, Spellbound, Primal Man, Alberto, this one, Double Cross, uh, The Godfathers, The Force, Four Horsemen, let me just get that in focus over there, The Prophet, Jonah, King of Kings, and The Big Betrayal. So quite, 
controversial even till today a lot of people online make fun of these comics they say they are they are harsh they say that jack chick was a bigot he was not a real believer he was not a real christian the people still published this it was uh, insulting it was not just controversial it <laughs> it pained a lot of people it offended a lot of people even christians get offended by these comics but personally i will share that with you later on how they impacted my life so this is alberto part one usually has a very nice graphical illustration over here and let's get into it it opens up and this is a story of a jesuit priest and his conversion to christ alberto rivera and we're not sure a lot of people said this was all made up but I, I don't want to just get into that also either, but what's presented in these comics is very factual and very verifiable with what's happening in Catholicism today. So it starts out over here. You can see that it's beautifully laid out. And these were all printed, let's see, in 1979. Yeah, I'm sure probably many of you were not born at that time. I'm from the 70s and the 80s. So I, I would understand this comics and the visual aspect about them, the drawing, the, the nature of how the placement is just visually very amazing and very appealing and very engaging and in, in a way kind of interactive. All right, so there you go, Alberto, based on a true story about Alberto, the Jesuit priest. And when he came to Christ, he revealed a lot was going on in the vatican and in roman catholicism especially in the jesuit order so there's a lot of talk about demon possession there's a lot of talk about uh spiritual abuse there's a lot of talk about even sexual abuse over here so it gets kind of heavy so a lot of these comics have interesting biblical uh scripture references not just jack chick's own opinion and it always ends up with there is a time of sellout compromise and fear and it ends up over there with what we call the uh the sinner's prayer okay now many of you probably don't believe in the sinner's prayer but it is a confessional prayer saying that we accept jesus christ as our lord and savior so all his comics end up with something like this where a choice is given to you you either want to serve tradition or man-made traditions or you want to serve the enemy the choice is yours the bible says it's only one way to heaven so biblically and theologically speaking it's amazing he, he's got it point on the way here and at the end of it he says these are the things you have to do if you said yes that you are going to accept christ and or yes that you want to be a follower of christ read your bible every day talk to god and pray be baptized worship fellowship serve with other christians in the local church tell others about christ exactly what scripture tells us to do so he's not deviating from scriptural truth around here maybe the methodology could not be uh, or probably is not acceptable to many people find it offensive but these comics had a huge impact in my life uh, my dad bought me these comics back in the mid 80s yes like i said i was born in the 70s raised up in the 80s over there <laughs> so that i'm a 70s 80s guy and they impacted me because it was through jack chick comics and these tracks plenty of them and the best one i have it's called it's this is your life now i came to know what the true gospel of salvation is and even watching some tele evangelist programs because my parents never told me what the gospel was because we came from a very nominal traditional religious family but for us it was just only about church but nothing about the gospel of salvation even the my preachers and my pastors never told me anything about this until i came across these comics and they had a huge impact on my life in my journey to accepting christ as my lord and savior and where the lord saved me from a life of rebellion from a life of brokenness from a life of rejection and from a wicked lifestyle that i had so this huge impact on my life together with the tracks so it's called arbeto part one and the next one is part uh four over here i do not have the others uh, these are very old i don't even remember when i got them i got these i got some of them back in uh, africa where i was born and raised up that's when my dad got me some of the tracks and one or two of these comics and these ones the, the rest of them i picked up right here in india it's called volume 15 the force it talks about the evil influence 
in the Vatican. <laughs> a lot about demonic possession again and deliverance and uh, being set free from bondage of tradition and man-made religion over here. The entire unbiblical concept of uh, Catholicism. And the four horsemen talks about from the book of Revelation. He gives his take on the four horsemen over here. Uh, where some people have said that the Popo, the Pope is the Antichrist or the false prophet. And he goes right into it. it. It talks about his personal testimony, Dr. Rivera. It's the four horsemen. And this came out again in, uh, let me try to get the date over here, 1985. Okay, so some of them are in the 70s and some of them are in the 80s over there. And there are other people also who collaborated with Jesuit priest Dr. Alberto Rivera. So, and the next one over here is called Chaos. This is amazing. This is a comic that uh, talks about the pre tribulation rapture. Jack Chick was into pre tribulation rapture. He, he didn't push it, but he did talk about a lot of it and draw about it and put it in his comics where the rapture of the church is coming soon and that. The church will not be going through the seven-year great tribulation and this is what's going to happen doctor the babies they're all missing that's impossible and a scenario what will happen when the rapture hits all right and very visually nicely done even though it came out in 1976 this is a 1976 comic i'm holding in my hand i don't think they have reprints for modern versions right now i think they do have other ones over here oh yeah just a real quick disclaimer it's recommended reading for adults and teens so for young adults teens even for adults but make sure it's not tweens or, or for a nine-year-old or ten-year-old it could not be um i won't say appropriate but it they're probably not going to be ready for comics like this. Now, my daughter is uh, 12, so I'm getting her into these slowly, especially some of the tracks that she will understand biblical concepts of what's happening in the world and why Christ is our Lord and Savior and keeping our focus on Jesus. Everything about these comics is not about just the content. At the end of it all, it's about the Lord Jesus Christ. And this one again is about the rapture. It talks about uh, a guide when the characters, the main two characters in these comics, they're called the Crusaders. They go to Jerusalem, to Israel for a visit over there. And one of the guides tells them what's happening over there. And he eventually becomes a believer. And Marty's name will be written in the Book of Life. He was the guide. And it says, yes, later than you think, it talks about Russia. Remember, we, this is back in the 70s. People were talking about Russia, what was happening in the Middle East. A lot of theologians, a lot of scholars, especially those who held on to the pre-trib rapture teaching from the scripture, were telling people, warning them, and what's going to be happening. God loves you and wants you to miss the tribulation. You do not have to stay back because we're not appointed for wrath. Simple as that. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Don't blow it and refuse Christ. So very hard-hitting stuff. That's why Jack Chick, even many Christian churches and pastors and preachers kind of hated on him because of his straightforward, blunt talk. And we need that. We need that in the body of Christ today. And again, all the comics that they have. Scarface is talking about an African tribal leader uh, who has his face scarred because he was beaten by some uh, white racist people and eventually he hated them. He thought that all white people were devils. <laughs> Their religion was uh, a disgusting religion, Christianity. So eventually he learned the love of Christ. This is talking about race does not come above Christ. Christ is above every race, every skin color, every ethnicity. So a lot of people want to bring race and color. Oh, Jesus is not white. He was black. He was brown. You know, Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His face has no color on it. It's going to be just light coming out. Fine. So it's Scarface. Very powerful one. I love it. It's great. So this is the first one. Okay, I should have brought that out first. The first one that Jack Chick came up with is called the Crusaders Operation Bucharest. And this was during the time of communist rule in... Um, Sometimes I forget my geography. I think Bucharest is the capital of Romania, right? Yeah, present-day Romania. It was under Soviet Union rule. They didn't call it Russia back then. It was called the USSR, and it came out in 1974. So this was a comic about 
smuggling Bibles into communist, Marxist, atheist Romania and all those other countries that were under the rule of the Soviet Union, where they were pushing atheism as a religion. Atheism is not just some belief. It is a hardcore demonic religion. Fine. And this was the comic that changed my life. This was your life. So I'll bring that out to the track later on. So just quickly, what makes these comics, the first one, why are they beautiful, soul-winning tracks? Uh, nobody can resist cartoons. They are heart-stopping stories, grab people's attention. Then each track presents the gospel at the end. Every chick track and comic gives a simple gospel message that anyone can understand. I love that. That's why I could connect. Not the complex gospel people are preaching today. The simplicity of the gospel. Keep it simple to preachers, pastors, uh, church leaders. Why can't we just keep it simple? Why do you got to add on your own man-made theology to it and just make a big mess out of it? And if you want results, check uh, or use chick track. Well, results come from the Lord. So a lot of people say, okay, I give a track with just words, boring, no pictures. Next time I'm using chick track. So a little marketing over there. And you could even order a sample pack. And they sold 300 million copies in the last 33 years, which is true. They have it in 60 foreign languages and more coming up. So they even have it in digital format. Now, back in the 70s and 80s, there was no digital format. There was just printed versions here. So you could order it. And when my dad got it, he got it from a, a Christian bookstore back in, in Zambia, in Africa, where I was born and raised up in. So he, they had a whole sample pack over there. And uh, I never knew why my dad actually got it. Even till today, he, all of a sudden he just bought it and gave it to me. And it really impacted and brought a change in my life. And they're based in California. So that's just some of them. I have a lot of the tracks. I'll bring them out in my next video. So Operation Bucharest starts out with simple with, with a very simple scenario which is still happening in many countries ruled by atheism and by communism and marxism like north korea and uh, myanmar and other places like that laos and cambodia where somebody spies on a local underground church goes to the authorities and they raid that place they seize the bibles they beat them up they torture them up they don't even take them to trial they just imprison them or, or some of them just execute them so very hard hitting. And then the news reaches the, uh, the people in America and they said, we need someone to send Bibles over there. Okay, so the two main characters who are called Crusaders, again, you don't have to be so focused on the logo and the name. It's much more than that. The first one is called, the first guy is called Timothy Clark. And the second guy over here is James Carter. Not the other Jim Carter who was the president back in the 70s. Now, the reason Jack Chick did this back in 1974, in the 70s, if you were back in the West, in America, it was a time of political, social, economic, and even race-related upheaval over there. A lot of stuff was race-related. And at that time, black people got along pretty well with white people. And... Uh, there wasn't much of the nonsense. There was not much wokeness going on like what we have today. So he introduced two characters, a white man and a black man. And both of them are believers. One of them was in the Vietnam War, was led to Christ after the war. Another one was a gang leader and um, a real bad man, a nasty gang leader. Everybody feared him. And except one little preacher, he goes up to the preacher and says, you can't kill me unless your father gets permission. He says, my father, man, hey man, you don't even know my father. Yes, I do. Satan is your father. <laughs> so that's why you can't touch me. So this little, small, little bald head of preacher over there goes up to this big, nasty gang leader and says, you really believe all that jazz? These are all 70s and 80s terms, all right? So if you were brought up in the 70s, 80s, you would know. Say, What's all that jazz about? What are you all just joking about? You're talking about that pie in the sky? I'm talking about Jesus. So the preacher preaches right there, and the simplicity of the gospel, and James Carter says, that's out of sight. Tell me. Nobody told me this before. And he says, I got to clean up my life. You can't clean it up. I love that. The preacher says, you cannot clean up your life. What are you going to use? Some kind of special soap? Some kind of special detergent? No. You need the blood of Jesus. So he gives his life to Christ. So they both team up and they work for a Christian organization where they're sent on very 
dangerous mission. So the whole story behind Operation Bucharest is um, smuggling Bibles into Romania and into communist nations over there. And eventually they get it done. Uh, one of them, uh, Timothy Clark, is seduced by a Russian KGB agent and she wants to stop what they're doing but eventually he leads her to Christ after she starts reading the Bible. All right. And she ends up being arrested and she is imprisoned. There you go, the end of Operation Bucharest. And it says here, the, the woman's name was Sophia, who was sent to seduce him as a honeypot. That's the term they use. And to distract him from preaching the gospel. Sophia's suffering is temporary. The rapture will take place. She will be with the Lord. She will miss the coming Holocaust. So whatever per people were being persecuted for the sake of the gospel in prisons and being, in being imprisoned and tortured is very temporary. The Lord is coming back. Sophia will return with Christ and rule with him in his earthly kingdom. And then Sophia made the right choice and the gospel message is presented in a clear and amazing way over here. Fine, so that's it. The Ark talks about Noah's Ark and people making fun of Noah's Ark over here. Uh, people trying to discover it. We really don't need the Ark. We have the Lord Jesus Christ was our Ark over there. And Primal Man, oh, this, when this came out, I remember, came out in 1976. This was a direct assault against evolution. And I'm so glad that Jack Chick had the boldness that only comes from the Holy Spirit of God to come up with something like this. Because evolution took its height in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Not much right now. That's when it was pumped into Western schools, Western colleges, and it gave birth to atheism and a whole bunch of other filthy nonsense that today the West is paying a heavy price for it. So it talks about a TV program they're making here about evolution. And uh, again, James Carter and Timothy Clark team up with, um, with a professor and they debunk evolution over here completely. And in the end, one of the producers of the show says uh, this, I will not stop making these. I, I've listened to your arguments, but to me, my money, my God, sorry, my God is money. And I'm going to start making it and pumping this and brainwashing and damaging the souls and the minds of children to follow evolution. And unfortunately, many Christian preachers did not like it. So they come across one of uh, their friends who is Tommy. He plays one of the characters in this TV series about evolution. And he gives his life to Jesus. Whereas the guy who produced it said, no, I want to serve money. Money's my God. All right, the next one is Broken Cross. Ooh, this is heavy. This is about the occult, human sacrifice, cannibalism, and also, I'm going to just go there, it talks about how many pastors and preachers are pretending to be Christian leaders but are involved in the occult and witchcraft. They come across a pastor who says that, you know, we just heard there was a murder in your area. A girl was found, a teenage girl who ran away from home. Uh, two, guy, two people, they kidnap her. They actually give her a lift, but they kidnap her and they inject her, sedate her, and they're going to sacrifice her to Satan. And they drain the blood and they found the body. And they go to a local church and say, what about occult activity in the area? And the preacher says, come on, it's the 20th century. 20th century because it's uh, 1974, we're in the 21st century. How many preachers actually dismiss the occult and satanic practices today? It's just sad. It's just, it's stupid and it's sad and it's really disgraceful. And they still question this preacher and he says, you're mentally sick. And uh, they ask him a question. When are you, I mean, when, when did you get saved? When were you born again? And um, the question was, when did you receive Christ as your Savior? And he says, it's none of your business. He says, I don't believe in any of that stuff. I don't believe in the Word of God. How many pastors can you come across today who say, I do not believe the Bible is the Word of God. I do not believe Jesus is God Almighty. I don't believe in the virgin birth. So you can imagine, back in, in the 70s and the 80s, when these comics were coming out, they were... They were almost like prophetic in nature of what's going to be happening to the church today. He says, I'm a very liberal pastor. The term today is used progressive Christianity. 
They don't use the word liberal much. They call it progressive Christianity, deconstructing Christianity. Starts abusing them. Whenever you see that, those are swear words, profanity. Could be the F word, could be the MF word, or whatever. It's all blanked out over there. And this guy turns out to be an occultist. He's burning a black candle made out of human flesh, a skull, and over here. And they come across uh, a young woman um, in a cafe. There's cannibalism over here. It's on the rise. Cannibalism is on the rise. And uh, later on, they come across a young woman in a cafe. She's wearing a pentagram, which is a symbol of witchcraft in the occult. And they lead her to Christ. And eventually, they are about to kill her because she's become a Christian. They storm the place where, they, where they're going to sacrifice her to Satan. And uh, in the name of Jesus, James Carter says exactly what Scripture says we can say. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. That's it. Praise God for this. And Angel of Light, ooh, this is a heavy one too. This has to do with who Lucifer was from the beginning. How he turned out to be what he is today. Satan. Sabotage, again a very controversial one about the attack on the King James Version. Uh, I know a lot of people just do not gel or vibe with uh, KJV only people. And I'm not going to get into that. My translation is the KJV, but I would not call myself a KJV only person. Um, but in the case of translations and transliterations, going back to the original text, there's been a lot of problem with that. We, we do know that's happening. It talks about historical evidence of why we should stay away from other translations. Again, very controversial one. Spellbound, one of my favorite ones. This talks about, because I can relate to this. Uh, at a very early age, I got involved in heavy metal and extreme, really nasty rock and roll music uh, as a teenager. So I can, I can relate to this one. It's all about rock and roll music. It talks about uh, best-selling rock artist. He gets into an accident with uh, James Carter, taken to a hospital, and James wants to preach the gospel to him, but he stopped right there. So the guy says, "Why don't you come over for a party? You know, I'm, I'm." Uh, I'm out of the hospital, I'm feeling fine, man, you saved my life. And come on over, he tells him, come over to my party, there's food, there's booze, there's grass, there's pills, there's coke. Um, this is my new lover, far out. There's, there's all kinds of filth and fornication and perversion going on in the party. And look at all the symbols that they see in the party, the unicorn horn, the pentagram, the ankh, the exagram, the scarab, uh, the crescent symbolizing Diana, queen of heaven, and Lucifer over there, wow. And eventually, when they're about to eat, they say a prayer. They say grace over their food publicly. So people get angry. And this is connected to uh, this comic over here. Um, what was the other one? I forgot. Yeah, it's connected to the Broken Cross. The people that were in Broken Cross are also in here. Some of the people got away. All right, let me get that into focus. And eventually, uh, they get the singer, the rock artist, to to listen to the gospel. He says, I'll think about it. And um, the organizers of this coven, this occultic group, decide to kill him. And it's true. You know what happens to the record sales and the music sales of dead artists? It always goes up. When Michael Jackson sold his albums, he did sell millions, but after he died, it quadrupled. Keep that in mind. And it, and it is true even today. <laughs> so they get rid of the guy. And uh, the next one is, is hard-hitting because it talks about a deacon in a local church where his daughter is a teen daughter listening to hardcore rock and roll music. And eventually a preacher comes to the church who was an ex-occultist and says you have to get rid of all that stuff. He talks about Halloween, the Druid religion, human sacrifice, um, the history of Halloween and the history of rock and roll music, how it first came, using drums, using that melody, using that music, using those lyrics. And the girl whose dad is a deacon or like an elder in the church gets angry and says, over my dead body, no way. Eventually she does listen to the gospel and she gets rid. And this magazine, this comic, not magazine, talks about what happens when music is produced in the studio and the incantations and the blessing of that music so it will permeate and infiltrate into the homes and the hearts, the minds, the souls of people and they will get mesmerized. Music 
is a gateway. You can either use it to glorify the Lord Jesus or it can be used to glorify Satan. Be very careful of what we even listen today. So it goes on into it where people bring out all the stuff and they burn it. And eventually the news media gets a hang of what they're burning and saying this is just like Nazi Germany when they were burning stuff. So again, <laughs> they turn the tables around. Fine, and Double Cross is a continuation of Alberto Rivera's testimony over there. So okay, 30 minutes for all these uh, comics. Well, look into it, church. I don't know if you get access to it. I bought some of them right here in uh, Bangalore from a store called ELS. I don't know if they still have it. If you do have friends relations in America, uh, you can tell them to probably send over a package of samples. But the best one that you can do right now is go over to chick.com and check out the online digital formats and probably just download and reprint them. I would encourage you to use to read them for young adults and for teenagers, for everyone over here. So have a blessed day ahead of you. And I got uh, this one coming up, the tracks, the little mini tracks, which you can leave around everywhere, anywhere. And I'm praying and hope that people will be blessed and edified and will seek the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Have a wonderful day ahead of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look up for our Lord Jesus is coming back soon. And I end with this, Maranatha. Even so, come soon, Lord Jesus. Shalom, church. God bless. Bye-bye.